opposition. Love is opposition. Love is anarchy right now. Trump thinks that this is fucking anarchy know, right now. I know. You know what I'm saying? And the reason why he thinks it's anarchy is because he's so fucking far detached from being in the streets that this is basically this is this is crime. Man. This is crime. Man. You know what I mean? People getting awoke and aware of shit. That's crime. Man. But we all know it's not. He's just no peace. Changing the status quo. No Thank you. 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 Yeah. Are you going to be out there in the day park? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to do the one o'clock. There's a ton of energy that got started today in a real discussion space around, around like, how can we support the, the actual logistical next steps that need to happen? And we want to hear it from people like you because you have the clarity. Like I'm hearing you and I'm like, oh my God, that's like, that's the voice. That is, that's that. And, and like to, uh, for there to be essentially like a council uh, to really think about, okay, we're all gathered here and you're right. A lot of people don't know how to convert this energy into actualization, manifestation. That's where like, okay, we're dealing with a situation where we're going to have at least 50% of the SVP budget. We're going to have at least a whole, like we could actually create a system where we revolutionize how voting is done digitally. I mean, we could like literally do a lot right now that would change the game. But we need to rally, or, like, it's not my voice that is needed. Like, we need to hear your, we need to like lift your voice up. How can we, are you going to be part of these things? Like, I'm here every day. I've every been here day. since day one. I've been out here since the days when, I'm, well, it makes it like, a fuck, it's amazing how long 10 days or 11 days feels yeah, like after all I know, I know, I know. Cause like I'm making it sound like back in the day or some shit, <laughs> yeah, no. yeah. But like I was out here initially because of the reaction of what happened to George Floyd. So I was out here, I didn't give a fuck if it was one or a hundred thousand people. I would have walked with one other person if they were upset about it. Yeah. Just because of the fact that it hit me the same way that it hit everybody else out there. Now the issue with that is, is like, the, I'm not I'm not out here for me. I'm out here standing behind the black woman. You know what I'm saying? That's the first person. I'm out here for indigenous people that haven't had a chance to speak. I'm out here behind the black woman that should lead the fucking march. So at the end of the day, if you want to get the right voices out here, ask every fucking black woman that black you fuck woman. that you possibly can. That what are they doing out here? Why are why are they out there? How are they feeling? You know what I mean? Even ask them how Without they are. You know what I mean? Don't exploit them, them, but just at the same time be be clear. Like ask like talk to these people like they're your family and shit like that yeah. because Realistically, they've had to deal with so much, and I feel like, true, true, me personally, true, true. don't get me wrong, like I have my own grievances and everything yeah. like that, but I feel like I have a platform where realistically, if I stand on a fucking podium but I scream loud enough, they're gonna say, okay, I'll listen to him, yeah. but they don't know yeah. why they're listening to me. They're listening to me because I got a dick, straight well, up. And you're because what happened, Because and the reason why I say that yeah, is yeah. because Breonna Taylor didn't bring all these motherfuckers out here, you know what I'm saying? If like Sandra Blanding and these motherfuckers out here, you know, and that's a real thing. Like, and I think that that's why we need to stand behind the narrative of the people who haven't had a chance to speak. So realistically, all of the leaders out here, yeah. in my opinion, should be the coalition of black women that are ready to actually been putting in the work for a long period of time. So ask them first, roll up on brothers. Ask ask the people out here who've been out here since day one. You've asked, there's been a couple people out here. My guy over here, you know what I'm saying? That's These are my peoples, you know what I mean? Ask these people out here who've been out here since day one about how they feel. And I know for a fact that you're gonna get a lot of different answers, and that's a beautiful, that's a beautiful thing. Right, right, you right, want a, right. you want, you want a panel, you want, you want different names. you want yeah, contradiction. Yeah. You want yeah, that. Yeah. You want opposing opinions because we're a quilt. You know what I mean? You're never gonna have everybody on the same side. Never, not everybody's out here for the same grievances. But I think in order to kind of get what the overall messages are, I think that you need to go through the intricacies of those differing opinions. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And I think that that takes a lot of work. It's very tedious. It's socially exhausting, but you know, that's the work that needs to be done, you know, and that's okay, you know, and I think that those are the people who really need to be listened to first. I'm, I'm enamored with the fact that there are a countless number of indigenous people out here who I haven't had the chance to see or listen to my whole life. And I've been hearing some stuff that, you know, hits me in a way where 
it's the exact same thing. Black lives matter, indigenous lives matter too. You know what I'm saying? All that shit. It's all like obviously right, I'm not right, gonna go right, into right. the all lives matter thing or anything like that, but that's why Black Lives Matter is here, and that's why motherfuckers don't get it. Like they think that this is some kind of like Black Lives Matter. It still makes me laugh that to this day out here we're still having debates with people about all lives matter. Yes. Why the fuck are we out here? If that's even a debate, you know what I mean? So I, it goes back to the whole thing about, you know, let's keep each other informed out here. Let's network as much as we can. I'm hoping eventually, you know what I'm saying? And I've been told by my, by my good friend, yeah. you know what I mean? That there is going to be hopefully community setups where we can actually start educating people while we're out, that's out what here. We need. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, we got, you don't need possible. to have yeah. like yeah. one exact movement yeah. to get a whole bunch of damage done. All damage to the system is good damage. So we can line up these setups and have all these people who, are, who can talk about equity loans, who can talk about um, uh, okay, protecting yeah. your streets, uh, martial arts, uh, feminist rights, uh, trans rights. You can get yeah. every yes. little booth up yes. here yes. and yes. get it started yes. so that way you can get the revolution started, you can get these people moving get and get the and voices that need to be need. out here. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. That yeah. way all these messages can get out there and you can come to your right, own back. sections and almost like it's almost like a troop gallery. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, like, yeah, totally. And and totally. Definitely. Oh my God. So yes. How can I? Uh, this is exactly what there's. There's a lot of people wanting to support and give their energy, but there's not. There's kind of a loose, uh, a looseness to this where there's not a centralized. Where do we? Where do we go to find out where the like? Oh, do you need tents? Do you need uh, whiteboards? Do you need like? What are the things we can do? Um, and and with just even like, who are these female leaders? We're still learning. Like a lot of us are still learning. Uh, Nikita Oliver. First right. of all, well, hands down. You know what I mean? Like, um, to be 100% honest, like that's one of the reasons why I'm out here myself. You know, it's to learn exactly who like the leaders are. I came out here originally because I've known Nikita for a long time in yeah. the sense of who she is. I've got a couple of good friends that have known her and I've seen her rise and I've seen her come up and I know that she's not out here for Nikita Oliver. She's out here for the people. And I think that when it comes to following it, like Africa Town, following uh, BLM movement, following the People's Party, uh, a lot of those grassroots organizations were started by women of color. And I think that, that to me, that's where I've actually had to ask myself where I need to actually kind of like start following these specific movements because I have a lot of angst and anger and stuff like that too. And I know for a fact that my intentions out here are to not gather a whole bunch of people and say, this is what I think we should do. Right, because no. it, there's a no. lot of voices that need to be in that conversation. Exactly, yeah, yeah, I'm coming yeah. up with my idea is getting to talk with people too and realistically I'm the type of person where like if it's a leader I would rather just whisper it in their ear and be like yo this is what I think gotcha, you know what I mean gotcha, I, gotcha, gotcha. like you know what I'm saying because I feel, I feel like that's really humble of you you have a lot of clarity like I'm feeling how much clarity and how much thought but yes there's a lot of intimidation you. with leadership you know what I'm saying and I think that that's something that really like I know my strengths and weaknesses to the point where I know that I could fumble and make a mistake as a leader that I feel like I would be able to recover from as just a soldier and somebody who wants to like spread good message and actually educate in small pockets. You know what I mean? Almost like a chessboard. I don't want to be the king or queen. I just want to be like, like, hey, I'll take a pawn. I'll take a pawn. I'll take a bishop. Whatever. Just like get me into a position where I can network with as many. I'm doing. Like you're doing my it. I mean, you're doing yeah, it. Like, right you know what now. I'm saying? Like yeah, yeah, the yeah. stuff I'm telling you, yeah. I'm not doing that because I'm like going around telling people to do it. I'm yeah. like telling myself first when I get up and I come out here and I try to talk to as many people as I can. And eventually, I, if I think that it's something I've been doing habitually, then I'll tell other people. Maybe that's. I've been doing this, maybe you can see where that goes from here. So, you know, I'm really hoping eventually that, you know, we can actually utilize all this space the best way we can. You know, obviously this is gonna be a party, this is gonna be occupied, there's gonna be a lot of good feels. Yeah, uh, yep, so already. that's a good thing. Like I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be the one like the trunch bull and say like right. er, like y'all motherfuckers shouldn't be having but a good then time. Convert but. that energy into actionable exactly. momentum. Right? But exactly. but the, that energy is important too because that's what's keeping this from no one's gonna interfere with this once with the positive by here, but it's also got to turn into something that doesn't just go back to normal. Because I heard that that's what attracted me to what you were saying. I was like, okay, cool. There's another brother on the like on the spark of like let's convert the energy into something that isn't just going to go back to normal. So like the infrastructure and architecture with this space of how we do that is a council meeting of like I, you know I don't know you probably know the people, but we could like sit here and have a circle and be like, how do we make this space? 
the, what's the phased approach to get to a space where we're, you know, maybe it's not just you, but it's a lot of people finding out, here's 10 different ways to solve this issue, this yeah. issue, and then we can whittle it down and we can speak about what we've come to from council. Yeah. And also, like, kind of going back to uh, what was previously spoken about, kind of like not leaving it, not leaving the Socratic seminar to the classroom. Uh, oh, for instance, yeah, yeah. I was walking, I was walking down the street the other day, like, just the other day, and I saw along somebody's window uh, just a printout of different books to read by different black leaders that they were recommending to the people. And small shit like that, yeah. That does so much because all they had to do was put it on their window, they read these books, people can walk by, and it's consistently seen by different people. That means that could do so much because of the fact that it's consistent, uh, it has a point, it has residual effect. Yes. People and have relationships with the person who posted it. You're more exactly. likely to read the book if someone recommends it to you. I think what's powerful about this moment is, well, it's powerful about the Black Lives Matter movement is that there isn't that one leader. It's decentralized internally so that it's about the idea. And it has to revolution. permeate. Yeah, it has to permeate. It's incumbent of all of us. It's incumbent of me, you, and all of us to go home and do our everyday lives and like think about how do we let this moment change us for the better? How do we all interact with our families, our, you were saying, your uh, workplaces? How do you change what your uh, workplace is doing? It, it's everyone going out from here. It's building right, an infrastructure right here, energy. but this idea needs to permeate beyond Capitol Hill. Well, and that was what was so cool about the discussions here is you had people coming from like, hey, I was a Trump supporter two weeks ago, and I'm like from an Orthodox Christian background and felt politically like I couldn't associate with this, but just showed up. And now he's having a conversation with a dozen people of very different backgrounds. Now he's going to go home and have that very new exactly. conversation yeah. with his family. Sure. And we're and because we've streamed the whole conversation, that conversation can exactly. then go and pollinate even further. This this feeling, we don't need a martyr. We need huh? this feeling to spread like COVID. Did. <laughs> oh, yo. That's one of my favorite analogies yeah. of this moment. Is yeah. talking about yes. There is a virus, but the virus is also racism. You've probably heard that one. This is something that's been around for a Which very long a time. Which is a hell of a lot more dangerous. Then this, if right. racism is the uh, permanent background virus, Let's talk if, about if racism is a virus, right. then the paradigm shift that is right now is the medicine. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Or the cure, or however you want to call it. And I think that that's something where, you know, with medicine, they say, like, if you're trying to get rid of something and you're prescribed something, they don't tell you to take the pill once and then they're like, oh, okay, you get it over. If you have an illness, they're like, take this this many times this week, you know what I mean, to, you know, keep the consistency of the antibodies to kind of kill the virus, you know what I mean, or how I was, I'm not a fuck that's, No, I think that's but, what's complicated, you know, is you need, it's not something that has a vaccination, there isn't a checkbox, there's not a cure for it, it is a very deeply rooted thing that we don't have an easy box to check, and I think that's what I'm fearful about in 2020, being an election year, a lot of, like, a lot of uh, people are thinking, oh, 2020 is election year, we get Trump out of office, then we're good, we go back to normal. Obviously that's not the case. And we need people to realize that it's not just about kicking the motherfucker no, out of the office. My it's boss, systemic uh, my boss yeah, sent yeah. us an email, and I'm not going to mention where I work or who this boss is, uh, but she sent out an email basically saying, you know, we've been going through a lot of things, the murder of George Floyd was absolutely horrible, but this all comes from this president that has been, you know, distorting the media and getting this, and she put all of her blame behind a pack of Cheetos, man. Like, and I'm sitting there thinking in the back of my head, like that kind of frame of thinking is what's causing the problem, is blaming this whole thing on one person. Trump is Trump is the result of this condition. Yeah, like, yeah. Trump is Trump is the amalgamation of, of like if, if if this rage is coming from people who are disenfranchised and marginalized, then it's the same thing in the reverse of the conditioning of somebody like him. You know what I mean? He's gone through they say that trauma is something that you can pass down. Like, like think about dogs for instance, you know what yeah. I mean? Like their trait we built we made dogs. You know what I'm saying? We made these wild dogs into these domesticated breeds by giving them certain kinds of trauma and conditions that made these new dogs. So that same
same thing can apply to human beings, and I don't think it's just with things like slavery or conditioning in the sense of like things like Jim Crow or the Red Line or mass incarceration, what's been happening to the black community and other communities of color, but I'm also talking about inheritance, apathy, you know what I'm saying, uh, you know, entitlement. I think that those things can be passed down too because of the fact that once you have a grandfather that doesn't give a fuck, that passes it down to his son that don't give a fuck, that passes it down to his son that don't give a fuck, where you would think if it's a family of people that don't give a fuck, they're really gonna have the um, uh, likelihood of having another kid that suddenly cares out of something? No, that's the culture of this thing. They've been yes. passing this cycle of hatred and apathy down. So that's the same thing when it comes to changing the conditions for people like us is like, you know, trying to get this movement started in the sense of trying to improve ourselves but also breaking down this frame of mind that Trump has had. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm, like, I, I truly believe I don't know if Trump is irredeemable, but I believe that everybody can have a change of heart. You know what I mean? I think that everybody I like that can, yeah. can be yeah. broken down. It's just how and, how, and who's got the patience to do it. To you know what I'm saying? Like, who, yeah, exactly. Like, who's going to use this much energy to change the mind of one person? Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, and realistically, a lot of people just say like, they're wild. Fuck it. You know, like that's how I am. Like, I'm not going to sit here. Well, and what's interesting is we get to the fuck it point, and a lot of people in the nation have. But why can't we in real time, we all have these cell phones, that's one thing that keeps getting me, right? Why can't we be like, make a real time decision as a nation, digitally, about how to change the, like, no, this is not working. Yeah. One button on a, on a phone. Like, it should be that easy if this is democracy. I know one thing that would change like our blockchain, president's frame of like, mind. Like, secure, if he like, lost all of his money tomorrow, yeah, yeah, that's that true. would make him wrong. You know what I'm saying? Like, it takes, it's funny, it takes like, what small yeah. things that you can think of conceptually that would break a person down. But then it's like, okay, how do you But maybe break that up? system is flawed to begin with. The, oh, whole, yeah. the whole hierarchy of just having, maybe we need to have serious discussions. And I know this is beyond what is in scope here, at least stage one. Because yeah. right now we're just talking about let's reform police, let's right. reform, let's do the things for the Black Lives Matter movement that are like right front and center, solve that, and then we can move on. But the move on is like, how do we actually create a more democratic process and everything so that would this can actually be the United States like everything that this was supposed to be where yeah. you know it's just we're, we're not it's not an oligarchy we're, we're, it's not you know it's not supposed it's, to be it's not supposed keyword supposed to be it's not supposed to be an oligarchy but that's what it was never it was bad. never what we said it was it goes back to the whole thing like we, we were well, ugly to begin well, with let's at least it pretends to be Exactly. That's a, that's you know, a big like, deal. At least it pretends to be. So we can say, oh. Stop pretending that we have like, four legs when we have yeah. two. Let's just, and let's see how we walk with those two legs. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, and, and figure yourself out from that point. Unlearn what you've learned. And that's the thing is, like, once again, going back to talking to people out here and networking with people who've been through this because it's nothing new. This is not something where, this is not something where these people out here should have their voices heard, Absolutely. but it's not their obligation to be people's teachers. Right. Do you know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. right. Incentivize yourselves. Like, we, we have the internet, we have books. Like, mother, like, people, Bernie Sanders was in the civil rights movement. Do you think he had a fucking smartphone to get involved and try to figure out what was going on? No, he took, he had incentive. He took the time. Now, he's, like, and there's been plenty of other allies who have involved themselves in 